Zimbabwe and welcome to this week's edition of Transformation Markers. My name is Yvonne and I do hope I find you well. Today we have invited the Mayor of Harare, the capital city of Zimbabwe, and he's here to share with us the vision 2025. They say they want to build a world-class city by 2025. Uh, Councillor Gumba, welcome to the program. We want to talk about the vision that you have for Harare. Yeah, obviously we are facing so many problems in terms of uh, the economy and some of the problems that you talked about in terms of diseases mm -hmm. coming up, but uh, we have to work within the environment that we are working in to make sure that uh, uh, we create a, a, a situation where people benefit from the service that we give them. <coughs> uh, if you uh, consider yourself to be working in a bad environment and you don't deliver, then you are betraying the money that was reposed in you by the people. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to do is to see how best we can creatively, innovatively work within the environment that, we, that is existing. Mm -hmm. Painful as it is, but looking forward to deliver for the people. Let's talk about the cholera outbreak. What was that all about? Where did that come from? Our analysis and investigations mm. indicated that uh, it was a ball that was sunk on a private property um, at Tichagarika and uh, through seepage the ball was contaminated heavily and um, uh, this again shows that uh, our water systems must be uh, looked at to before you you drill or do anything in terms of uh, coming up with those facilities. But do we have to be drilling bottles in the capital we, we don't have to, but yeah. we are in this situation primarily because the um, central government has not uh, been able to construct the water facilities which we need for us to be able to complement the one we have. If you look at the researches which were done, we were supposed to be getting water from Kunji and Musan mm -hmm. uh, around 1999-2000. Those were the years that we were supposed to be getting water from the new facilities. But uh, a research was done and, and implementation was not. So you are looking at a situation where the current water infrastructure is no longer able to save and increase the population. So how have people been doing? We, we, we have uh, uh, gone beyond that and looked at how to improve and increase uh, water from the facility that we have. Mm -hmm. Because uh, besides that we can't do anything more um, uh, because the facilities that must be built are uh, owned by government. Uh, I see. But uh, on our part, we, we have to deal with the non revenue water, mm -hmm. uh, plug the leakages, uh, and make sure that then we are improving on our pumping capacities uh, to make sure that water is available to our people. Again, you need to be reminded that um, besides giving water to the residents of Harare, we also are giving water to the residents of Chitungiza, Noto, Nukumwa, and Shimba. And, uh, and effort to a lesser extent. Mm -hmm. So this has complicated the situation. Uh, we now faced with a situation where demand is out from the supply and uh, we, we need to start working on the new water facilities now. Mm, and I understand it's, it's just been um, uh, this the second month since yes. you've been inaugurated. Yes. Has there been any efforts to engage government so that it sees the importance of having these uh, facilities uh, developed in order to support, you know, the water system in the Yes, I, I paid a KT score on the Minister of Local Government and we discussed that. Mm -hmm. And again, I made it clear to uh, Mr. Nanga that there is much need for us to then look at uh, alternative water facilities to be constructed, mm -hmm. for us then to be able to complement the one we have. And they've, in, on numerous occasions, uh, 
uh, agreed with what I have been telling them and uh, they have uh, promised to look at it and uh, certainly they have said they have gotten money from China and uh, hopefully uh, time will tell as to the way forward in terms of that. Alright, so that is your water. Let's talk about sanitation. Yes. How are our sanitation facilities for the capital city? Yes, because of the increase in the numbers of people visiting the Sunshine City, mm -hmm. uh, we are bound to be faced with some shortages in terms of sanitation facilities. Uh, we have got fewer toilets and currently we are constructing one. And uh, we are thinking of uh, making sure that we buy portable toilets to implement the ones that we have to make sure that at the end of it all, things are there for our people. Mm -hmm. yes. um, you, you talked about constructing um, you know, ablution facilities in the city. Where, are we, where is this ablution facility being built? Under the footprint to join a city. Okay. Yes, we are constructing a toilet there and soon I will officially open it for the public to be able to get in and, uh, and use it. Alright, um, we have a situation in, in, in Harare, a traffic situation, yes. as I will point out to you. You know, if, if you travel frequently around Harare, you'd notice that there is a, a serious challenge with the uh, Jazz, you know, you look at the Woodsy roundabout, there, there is chaos, complete chaos. A person, a, a, a motorist can spend up to three hours, you know, just trying to navigate their way around the roundabout there. Uh, what is the uh, city's plan on our road transportation systems? If you look around, we are constructing um, roundabouts and uh, on the place that you have referred to, we intend to put up uh, a, a, a bypass so that then vehicles will obviously use it to decongest the area. Mm -hmm. And we are working with uh, the Ministry of Transport because uh, the other road belongs to central government, the other one belongs to us. And uh, drawings are already there and uh, I think we are now running around for funding. The intention is to make sure that we decongest that part. But beyond it, uh, we have also um, been able to construct a roundabout at the corner of Gaydon and Borodel and Adaral Street. Mm -hmm. And we are moving to Arara Drive and, uh, and Loma Gundi. Mm -hmm. And now we are also constructing a roundabout at the corner of Highland and Clinicals. And all these are meant to decongest the areas. And um, at, at Mbuzi, we are also going to be constructing a, a road that goes to Amalinda uh, into Glenora and Gumbi to make sure that we decongest that part. Mm -hmm. And we are also going to be constructing and resuscitating a road that goes to the Mbuzi graveyard to our new clinic that we are constructing there mm -hmm. and eventually to, to, to the Chitungiza road so that they will decongest decon that part mm -hmm. so that we make it possible for vehicles to use different roads and decongest the roads around the part. Yeah, because uh, during the campaign with President Nelson Chavis are talking about the need uh, for spaghetti roads and you know it's even um, expounded in the smart document when you talk about building a hundred billion dollar economy anchored on those principles of the manufacturing industry, transportation industry being part of that. Um, so it, it's quite interesting and exciting to actually learn that you have uh, those programs. Let's talk about clinics. You mentioned that you're building one um, around the Mbuzi area. We, we, we are actually constructing two. Okay. Yes, uh, there's that one that you have referred to. And again, another one at Chitubu Shopping Center in Glenora. And beyond that, we have also uh, transformed one of our clinic in Nobuku to ensure that uh, it can perform Caesar there. And uh, uh, in the last few years, we've actually constructed uh, one in Budiriro and another one in, in Kwazan. So beyond that, then we are going to plan and look at uh, 
construction of others to make sure that uh, we increase the numbers that we have. Okay. And um, in terms of, of those facilities, do they have medication? You know, people are just going there and getting prescriptions and stuff like that. But we know that most people, especially those who stay in the ghetto, you know, some people will not have the, you know, the funds to actually purchase, you know, medication in uh, pharmacies elsewhere. Yes. Whereas if the clinics and the, 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 the pharmacies, they, you know, they are cheaper than our commercial, you know, pharma. are there any such programs in place to ensure that medication is actually found in the clinics? Yes, we have tried our level best, but uh, you also need to know that um, there is uh, an act of parliament that was uh, enacted around 1976, mm -hmm. and uh, it does uh, say government must pay and give to local authorities 50% of their total health services budget. And this has not been coming our way mm -hmm. um, since around 1990. And uh, in, uh, in my formal meetings with the, the minister, I raised the need for the government to fulfill the requirements of the law and provide us with that. Uh, if you look at that, if that was coming and what we were saving, reserving for such purposes, mm -hmm. we are going to make sure that everything is available within our clinics. But we are handicapped by the uh, lack of fulfillment of the requirement of law by government and again by the economy which has not been making it possible for us to perform well in, in accordance to our own expectations. Mm, okay. I understand that you presented a very elaborate 100 day program yes. as well as a plan to say where is it that you want to take Harare to? Yes. What are the key um, drivers, the key um, pillars in your plan? Yes, uh, uh, the intention is to improve on the quality of water that we supply to our residents. Uh, on that one, we are working with a, a company from Holland uh, that has seconded to Stepnokrasia, and uh, some are here, some are coming uh, probably next month. Uh, they are going to look at our dosing system and make some improvements on it. Um, again, beyond that, we are looking at uh, making sure that uh, we deal with the lighting. Our streets really requires of us to make sure that we put up a system that lights our streets and it works. Um, so, uh, uh, in the 100 days, I uh, was simply saying we are going to be able to deal with uh, the, the problems that we have and make sure that our streets uh, have good lights. Uh, our roads are resealed and reconstructed, uh, starting with the CGD and, uh, and pavements. Yeah, seen that. Yes, know. pavements are well done. Happy that uh, working with uh, different corporates, and uh, more recently I met with the CEO of Econet, mm -hmm. who has promised to uh, refurbish uh, the whole of First Street. And I've also been discussing with numerous companies for them to adopt certain streets and to work on them, particularly greening the islands and make, making sure that um, uh, the, the outlook, uh, the image of the city has been screwed up. And, um, and um, the intention is to do five goals uh, in every ward uh, and, um, and uh, the CBD. And beyond that, we are going to come up with another uh, st uh, strategic plan that brings in new aspects of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And soon I'm going to write to every uh, uh, property holder within the CPT, asking them to make sure that then they uh, spruce up the images of their buildings, painting uh, and renovating them to make sure that they meet the new standards that we are setting. Mm. Uh, we are also going to be able to invoke our bylaws to make sure then that uh, those who don't comply are dealt with using our bylaws. Mm. And um, uh, on, 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 I've instructed the officials to come into the CPT and make sure then uh, that they uh, spruce up our, our packs mm. uh, to restore them to what they were in the past. 
and this uh, with this I have called upon volunteers to say come and seek to assist us uh, so that then the technocrats cannot complain about shortages of manpower. So mm -hmm. I, I then flighted uh, an invitation on my Facebook to say those Zimbabweans with skills, professional skills, must come over mm -hmm. and assist us in doing that as volunteers uh, and for free to make sure then that uh, the Pushing of the city mm. is not entirely our own as, as the leaders of the city. It's not entirely our own business. Mm. But mm. just to be holistic, inclusive, and citizens must participate. Mm. At least when people, everyone participates, then they take ownership. Uh, let's talk about the parts. I like the element that you brought in. Um, I've noticed, uh, maybe it's just me, I've noticed that there are fewer recreational facilities you know where children go the fields to go and play yes. you know the play areas for the children is the city considering those things as well yes yes it's important for us to make sure that we protect and to make available new areas for which our children and their, their parents can enjoy themselves uh, and in doing that we are initially going to start by looking at improving, improving the status of those that we have already okay. and then move into new areas and try to build and construct new, new entities for people. And uh, we are looking at uh, uh, engaging our corporates uh, who can then partner us into that, mm -hmm. those who want to uh, involve themselves into major business and sporting business. Mm -hmm. They are also free to come and you can meet them to trust them. Oh, wonderful. Let's talk about the rates. How is the billing system now? And are people forthcoming in terms of making the payments? Or they are still as uh, people are still complaining with, you know, with the amounts that they are made to pay? As of now, people have been uh, coming to our offices seeking for payment plans. Uh, I think it is coming from an understanding that uh, our people, most of them are not employed formally mm -hmm. and their ability to pay for bills is limited. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we have been encouraging them to say, come over and you talk, and so that at the end of it all, they pay something to the city. Uh, I also noticed a 50% uh, discount. discount. Yes, yes. Our revenue has not been increasing to our satisfaction. And um, uh, it has uh, complicated our ability to service the city. But however, uh, I think we were uh, voted in to not to complain, but to make sure then that uh, we, we service the city and be innovative enough. That's why uh, my council is looking at uh, creating entities such as uh, uh, that's, that's waste energy companies and um, organic fertilizer companies so that at the end we complement what the residents are paying with what we are creating yes, yes, we are putting there to, to be creative uh, Let's talk about vendors. Yes. It's been a very contentious um, issue. People are living off vending. Yes. Most of the people, and most of the people were doing their business in the CBD. But here comes a directive that they should leave the city. What is the city doing about that, or what has been the city's response to this, um, you know, sudden movement of the vendors? We 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 have created spaces to which we have asked them to uh, to sell their wares for. Mm -hmm. Because I think what has happened is that the central government just then uh, through the directive of the Minister of Health and the Minister of Health felt that they need as, as the, the governing uh, authority to come over and to make sure that they remove the vendors. Um, if you look around you can actually see uh, police, therapy, police officers working on with the vendors. Uh, however, uh, our trust was basically to engage them and uh, to make spaces available. But that was then overtaken by events to an extent that uh, most of the vendors are then driven out using the mighty of the state.
All right. So in terms of the new spaces that you've made available for yes. the vendors, uh, we've noticed, I think, along uh, Seke Road, um, just adjusting to Coca-Cola, there's a space that has been opened up for vendors. But this is, uh, you know, like dirt. It's, it's, it's an area that's full of dirt. We're getting into the rainy season. Do you think that is a proper space or council is actually working on, you know, making the place user-friendly? That's why I said uh, it was overtaken by events. Mm -hmm. Because I think in accordance to our plans, we were supposed to uh, make sure that we build a facility that looks after our people. Then, then when we were then building, then the director then came to say they must obviously go there mm -hmm. as, uh, as soon as possible. Then that complicated everything. Uh, but we are still working on it. Uh, these are people from Harare. They obviously expect us to to give them service. They brought it into power. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, so, uh, Mayor Gomba, maybe you can also talk to us about housing, the, the, the status of housing in the city. We've got a lot of migration that is taking place, we've got people who are getting married, we've got singles who want to stay on their own. What is the status of housing in, in the capital? Okay, besides the availability of states uh, through our planning division, we are also looking at uh, renewing the city. No, we are looking at renewal of Mbari, uh, we, we, are, we are saying we must now construct a new flats to accommodate our people and remove uh, semi-detached houses and put up flats again. So we are now uh, making available space through uh, building upwards and okay. making sure that we cater for the incre incrementing uh, of the population and the through urbanization who have been coming in. And we need to deal with that. Beyond that, mm -hmm. uh, we we are looking at regularization to regularize some of the settlements which were deemed illegal. Uh, that would also create a space for people. But regularization can only happen where it's possible. And uh, beyond that, again, we are looking at creating more states. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the identification of new areas for us to be able to plan and rezone residential and make stands available to our people. Um, I've approached government with the intention of asking them to avail more land mm -hmm. and uh, if they are uh, to positively respond to, uh, to our appeal, then obviously we are going to, are going to get um, more pieces of land available from the state and from there we will be able then to replan and rezone and make stands available. But our trust should be building upward, mm. not, not the other way, because at the end, land, land is not always available. We mm. need to obviously use, use that which we have and make sure that uh, we use it uh, sparingly and for future generations. So we must build upwards. Speaking of regularizing, uh, Mayor, we had an incident in uh, Harare South, if I'm not mistaken, where one of the councillors was actually manhandled uh, by some ZANU PF um, members who felt that their MP had to be there during this exercise. Does this have anything to do with MPs? Or? No, no. I think MPs uh, are well aware of what they are supposed to do within the law and what they are not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. They must never interfere with the work of our councillors. I think issues to do with regularizations are issues which councillors must be able to do uh, in terms of the Regional Town and Country Planning Act. And the MPs uh, must not be near to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think it was a question of, uh, of uh, politicians trying to, uh, to prevent the councillor from performing his duties. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's bad. And uh, I've, I've, I've called upon the ministry to to obviously involve itself with the protection of councillors to make sure then that councillors are not victimized or beaten for merely doing what they are supposed to be doing and what the people voted them to do. And obviously within the journey we are going to face some problems. However, uh, we, we, we are ready, we have braced ourselves to face that. 
uh, with, the, with the support that we have been getting from the party and, uh, and uh, the advices that we have been getting from uh, different uh, residents, citizens participating in our program, mm -hmm. we are confident that some of the issues that are affecting the city will be dealt with uh, during the period that will be leading the city. Um, is there anything else, uh, Mayor, that you may want to inform the residents, uh, the people of Zimbabwe, and you know, particularly the residents of Harare, in terms of the work that you're doing? No, I, I want to thank them for the confidence they have proposed in our council and uh, the intention is to work out for the people and make sure that we change the city, we need to arrest the decline which has been happening and we have got plans and plans which we feel will work well if uh, are implemented. And uh, going forward, we want to make sure that we, we deal with the pipe replacement. Uh, this is a topical issue, and we have engaged a, a, a Chinese company to water part, sewer part. Both, because all of them are old, and they also obviously need replacement. And uh, what we are doing right now is to make sure that then we engage people with um, uh, capital funds for for us to be able to to remove. And uh, we have signed an agreement with a Chinese company called Quad C. That, that looks at removal of the entirety of the CBD. Mm -hmm. And again, the, uh, the CEO of Liquid Telecoms assured me uh, when he came to visit that they are going to work with us to make sure that, that uh, we remove old pipes and old and leaking pipes uh, which are underground in, in, in Glenview and Udiri. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, we have also we made the resources available on our part to make sure that, that we remove from other suburbs which liquid is not going to be able to, 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 to help us. And we have also received uh, assurance from Econet to say they are going to work with us on precious removal and they are going to do it from the CBD to Mfakos, Glenora, Budirigo and Glenview. Mm -hmm. And uh, council on this one is also embarking on a, on a holistic uh, dump clearance program. And uh, we're also going to be declaring a, a certain day for cleaning the city. We are be calling about citizens to say, come over and help us to clean the city. They will be working with our people so that at the end we look after the city uh, as people who reside within the confines of the city. Wow, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Councillor Gomba. Um, we are excited because all that you have spoken about has included issues to do with citizen participation. So thank you so much, uh, Zimbabwe. This is uh, Councillor uh, Yabit Gomba that we had in the studio. Uh, join us again on our program Transformation Markers as we talk about issues that are affecting you. So if you've got any issues that you'd want us to address on the program, kindly feel free to send in your messages uh, in our inbox, info at mdc.co.cw. You can follow us on our Facebook page, MDC Zimbabwe. Do feel free to send in information that helps us, your feedback is always important to us. Thank you so much for joining us. We meet again next week.